welcome to another episode of 007 Gold. Um, spring's coming um, and it's getting warmer, hopefully. So I've now got my full uh, Blofeld haircut, <laughs> which I do every time it warms up. So anyway, today's episode, uh, we're looking at cheap budget watches that are in the style uh, of the watches from the 007 movies. So uh, basically, we'll, we'll compare some very uh, low budget watches, you know, um, with some of the ones that appeared in the movies and um, everything I do uh, and most of the things on this channel if I'm honest are uh, very low budget because simple as that I just don't have a lot of money um, but you can still have a lot of fun collecting stuff um, to do with James Bond and that's basically what the channel is all about um, so we'll uh, we'll have a look now and uh, here we go with the watches so here we are, the first watch um, that I'm featuring is the uh, Live and Let Die Hamilton Pulsar. Um, this watch in 1973, I was in the cinema when uh, it was first shown uh, and there was an absolute gasp from the audience when it lit up because we'd never seen digital watches and um, you know fast forward a few years later and <laughs> basically they were free with five gallons of petrol so there we go, that's progress. Um, but a very expensive watch at the time and still expensive now too expensive for me so this is what i choose instead this was basically 11 pounds uh, all stainless steel from ebay uh, it it's not exactly the same obviously but it's in the style of and of that era so it looks great i'm, I'm very happy with it um, moving on next uh, two rolexes rolex being very synonymous with the bond films um certainly the earlier ones uh, on the left is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual from Goldfinger and on the right is the Live and Let Die Submariner. Um, again, both of these watches, <laughs> there's no way I could have possibly afford them. But I can get ones that look similar relatively cheaply on Amazon or eBay or Wish and, and that kind of site. Um, so here we go. The, uh, the one on the left and the one on the right are both very similar. The main difference between them is, is, is a slight difference on the bezel. The pointers are pretty much on the same, but on the rotating bezel, the, um, the 12 o'clock round to 3 o'clock side um, is marked differently on one to the other. So uh, this one here looks mostly like the Goldfinger one, uh, and this one is more like the Live and Let Die one. But um, both very, very cheap, around about £15. Uh, and then we'll move forward into the um, in 1980s. Uh, this is the Seiko G757, uh, which was used by Roger Moore's Bond um, in Octopussy. Uh, again, uh, if you have an original of these, they're really appreciating, uh, you know, worth a lot of money now. Um, quite a lot more than they were at the time when they were new, so it, it's worth hanging on to. Good investment. Um, and what I've done is bought one of these, which is the uh, very difficult to pronounce. It's a Sekmi uh, digital. Um, and it's very similar again not exactly the same in the style of you know and it looks the part it's great fun uh, so and much more affordable that one was 17 pounds so not too bad at all now this watch here was the watch that was worn by Pierce Brosnan's Bond uh, in all four of his Bond films um, it's the Omega Seamaster uh, very popular watch and uh, very very attractive watch as well um, he has one a, a blue one in all four films there was also a black one which was seen in goldeneye uh it's the blue one personally that i prefer um and actually i have two versions of this um you can see here that this one's slightly different to the other the main difference being the one on the left has a secondary winder up at the uh, 10 o'clock mark uh, whereas the one on the right doesn't um and i'll show i'll put another picture on of each so you can see them in slightly more detail um, here we are, this is the one on the left where you can see the secondary wind up at the 10 o'clock mark. Uh, a really nice watch, absolutely lovely and a great strap as well. Uh, this one here, slightly darker, it is still a very dark blue and again another lovely watch. They were both £20 each, very reasonable. Did you spot the deliberate mistake? When I was looking at that um, picture of the Seamaster watches, I was actually looking at a different picture. Um, so it looked as if um, with the commentary that I didn't know left from right as I was talking about the watch on the right instead of the watch on the left but uh, not to worry I must give me the name of your oculus 
So there we are. That's my personal collection of watches that uh, are based on the watches in the James Bond movies. Um, now, I must say I'm not endorsing any of these watches or brands. Uh, I don't know if the watches will last for one week or ten years. Um, they're just my personal collection uh, that I wanted to show on here, just to show that you can get stuff similar to what's in the movies, but for a very low price. All right, so the next part of the show is um, about George Lazenby. Uh, George Lazenby, for all, he only made the one Bond film on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Many years later, um, would come back and do odd things where it was insinuated that he was James Bond, you know. And this is one of them. Um, the excerpt we're going to show is um, from 1983's Return of the Man from Uncle, which was made for TV, when a character called JB, played by George Lazenby, turns up uh, in a silver Aston Martin, which is kitted out. You might not have seen this, especially if you're a younger viewer, because, you know, 1983, we're going back a little bit. Um, so that's going to play it plays for around about five minutes, and uh, that'll end um, this episode. So I hope you've all enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to subs subscribe if you are uh, enjoying the channel. It doesn't cost anything, and it just means when I put a new video on, uh, you'll be notified on YouTube. But it gives me an idea that somebody out there is interested, so that's <laughs> nice to know. Um, so... Thanks very much for watching. Uh, here we go with George Lazenby in uh, Return of the Man from Uncle from 1983. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Napoleon Solo, Uncle's Finest. And this brought a father. Now that's not cricket. Just in case. Playing card, Comrade Vasilievich, and Caesar's wasn't your idea by any chance? No, no, my only idea was somehow to escape. Cut them off! Oh, don't let them take me back, Mr. Solo, please. Sorry about the question. All happens die hard. Hold on! I have no intention of taking you back.
Thank you.